you guys are about to see is a segment with Yodkun Pan Sitraipum, the elbow hunter of 100 stitches. And in this segment, he's working with me on footwork, which is a rare thing to get uh, extended video on and teaching from. So it's really interesting, beautiful footwork, and I did voiceover on it to help explain what's going on. So if you guys want to watch the entire session of this, you can check over on Patreon. Link to that is in the description, and the suggested pledge is $5. So hope you guys enjoy this segment. is really hard and requires a lot of practice. So here we're gonna work more on his footwork because really the footwork is what will bridge my difficulty with him standing southpaw and my ease with him standing orthodox. It's just the footwork will solve that between the two. See how his back leg kind of drags behind, but it's not lazy. It's part of the rhythm of how it goes front leg back, front leg back. It's like a, it is a gallop. It's like a horse in really nice stride. All those legs working together. And then see how he'll throw little fakes in before he changes direction. Like when he stops, in one spot to throw some strikes or to kind of fake and change direction. It, it breaks the rhythm to make him unpredictable rather than it being like confusing for him. Like I have to stop to throw these strikes. You can see the difference between when he's doing it and when I'm doing it, and it's an experience difference. He's done this for so many thousands of hours, and it's just so effortless. The hesitations and over leans and kind of drawing outside of the lines that I have is just effort, and that goes away the more you do it. I'm trying to do something, whereas he just does it. But this is how you learn to feel it. And this kind of thing, this kind of shadow box, he makes a big deal about doing this every day for like 20 minutes. This is not with someone in front of me. This is my own time. This is just doing it myself. This will help you immensely making this automatic so that when you're under the pressure of having someone right in front of you, like all the work that we just did, where he's trying to counter me and stop me and force me to be more um, consistent. All of that becomes easier by work that you can do completely alone like this. You do not have to have a sparring partner all the time to become good at sparring. You do have to spar, but this kind of work adds so much to your ability to move in space and how you move in space and your timing is like 95% of how well you fight. Mm, he's complaining that my gallop is a little bit too vertical. I'm like jumping, like, like jumping too high. Instead, he wants it to be more horizontal so that when I cover the space, it's more like a fencing. <laughs> So he's saying you have to picture where your opponent is. You have to use your brain while you're shadow boxing to see what your opponent's doing or where they are so that you know when you take a step like that where you're going to land. See how he doesn't lean his body too hard on the step? It's almost after the step. I'm jumping still. He says that you move your hip at the same time. You don't push your hip first. 
I was pushing my hip first because I felt like my butt was back, which is a consistent problem I have. So I tried to overemphasize it by pushing my hip first. And he said that that was too far in the wrong direction. So the, <laughs> the leg goes first and the hip comes with it. It's, it totally looks like if you're jumping over a river to, or like between rocks to cover a stream or something. Look at his whole, look at his whole line of his body from his foot to knee to hip to shoulder and then like down the center of his spine. So you can see where his center of gravity is, but also how the weight shifts on the move itself. You see that, so you understand what he's doing, and then you feel it for yourself in, in what your version of this is, and then just do it and do it and do it until it shapes itself. Like, you're never going to look exactly like someone else, even if you're stealing their move. I'm doing this really weird thing where I, like, scooped my foot in and then out. I think I was trying to imitate how big his step was, and for some reason it felt like I wanted to arch my leg in and then out, which was not right. I'm taking really nice wide steps, but when I land, I can't move again, which is his whole thing, is you're immediately ready to move again the second you land somewhere. So I have to figure out where my weight needs to be so that the second I land in this spot, I'm able to move again rather than like I've landed and now I have to redistribute my weight to be able to move again. The secrets of fluidity. Oh. His chest and shoulders actually move before his head does. Also, his head almost drags behind a little bit with his back foot. Samart keeps his feet really close together. It's like he's standing at a bus stop. So I was making a joke right there that when you take a really wide step, you're Yodkun Pan, but then I bring my feet together and I'm Samart. He doesn't bring his feet super close together at the end. He was imitating Samart right there, the feet close together and the teep coming out of it. But this is beautiful, like all the nuance to how you move, like everything between any of your strikes. I've heard it said that Muay Thai doesn't have footwork. That's insane. There is endless footwork in Muay Thai, and it can be very different depending on who the fighter is, but how you carry yourself through space in order to strike is way more important and beautiful and expressive of what you are as a fighter than the strike itself. Rolling. Hey, so what you guys just saw is footwork from a, a longer extended session with Yodkun Pan Sitrai Pum, the elbow hunter of 100 stitches. If you want to see the whole session, you can check that out at patreon.com. Link to that is in the description. The suggested pledge is $5, which helps me continue making content like this, doing the voiceover and meeting all of these great legends and crews of Thailand. There's over 60 hours of training like this in the library right now, so definitely go check it out. There's tons to go through.